Hey everybody, it's another episode of Wiggin' Out with Bobby Z, hosted by me, Bobby Z. This is really big her, and um, I just made her, and I decided to make a tutorial on how to make her. Um, so as you can see, she's really big, she's really full. This is just one wig. This is one wig with uh, four packs of hair added, although it gives the illusion of a bumped wig, or you could even wear a bump under, oh, one curl is getting in my way. You could even wear a bump under her, and then she'd be like that big, but I don't have a bump under her. This is all just teasing. This is about four and a half, five inches of height. Um, I measured her with a ruler and took a picture for um, my eBay shop. And yeah, so this is her. She's cute, right? Yeah. So today I'm gonna show you guys how to make her. I'm gonna have to split this into two videos because it takes a long time to do this. So the first video is going to be how to sew the hair into the wig and how to prepare yourself for a rooted front. And then the second part of the video will be combing it out, teasing it, styling it, and then cutting the rooted front. So this is the beginning of part one. Hope you guys enjoy. Today is the much anticipated how to turn a short little boy wig like this into a big, crazy, fabulous drag wig. The first thing you're gonna need is a short boy wig. This wig is about two inches long, two and a half inches long, which is actually a little shorter than I would normally go, um, but it was on sale, so it's fine. Um, it looks like a little cute little layered thing. It has like a bang and a little te texturized in the top. Um, you can. This is great for if you have a wig that's on its last leg. You can cut all the hair off short and do this. You can go and buy a short wig at the sales section. There's always something short and Liza Minnelli-ish like this at the sales section. So you can pretty much do this pretty cheap. This wig is by Queen of Beauty Sheba VIP collection. The style is VB and the color is T1B slash 27, which the T means it's tipped. So it means the root is a 1B and it means the ends are a 27. Well, you're going to need four packs of hair as well. I just go and buy curly hair at the store, and this is almost always in the sales section at the store I go to, so this was $5 a pack. Um, you can do it with straight hair if you want something straight. You can curl the hair and then do it. I wouldn't suggest doing all of this and then setting it because that is going to be so thick and it's going to be a pain in the butt. So just start with curly hair, start to finish, go. This is from Weaves New York, which is a store here in the city but I'm sure that this brand is carried all over the country, I'm sure. Um, it's the Weaves New York Ultimate Collection Italian Romance Curl. I got two packs in a 27, which will match the wig, and then I got two packs in a 30 so that I could get some nice dimension and color with my wig. So you wanna take your wig and you wanna put it on your block, much like I've showed you guys before. Pull the back as far down on that block as you can, especially if you're trying to make it bigger. This works even better if you have a long neck block. This block is a short neck, so if you have a long neck block, you can even pull it down even further, which is amazing for updos. We'll pull the other side down. And I talked about this before. You want to make sure that your little elastic straps are out because you don't want to sew those down to the wefting because then you won't have anything to adjust your wig with later, which is bad. Let's take my big, my big quilting pins and I do center, temple, ear. And when you do the ear tabs, I like to pull the wig and stretch it over and, and down so that it's on there really tight. Center first so it doesn't pull back. I do my sides and then I'll just do my two temple areas. Those areas are tied down for you to kind of play around with. Take your Mickey Mouse's out. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that the top of the wig is wefted. You don't want a skin top. Um, I guess you could do this on a skin top, but all of that stitching through the skin top is a rip it apart and it eventually would probably fall out. So do it with a wefted top wig and you'll get a bet the better result. So here you can see through the cap of the wig, you can see the wefting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow where the I'm going to follow where the horizontal and the vertical pieces 
of wefting meat. So as you can see, I'm just following this around and I'll clip as I go just to get it up out of the way and it's so you know where to stop. This wig has a lot of hair on the top going this way. Most wigs won't. They probably only go back to about here, but this one goes all the way back past the top of the crown. So then as you can see, I've reached back towards the front. I like to clip underneath the wefting or underneath the ribbon of the wig, and that way you get a stronger clip. When you pull the hair out of the front, you want to make sure that there are at least two weftings right there, if not more. Two is preferred because you're going to sew another piece right across the front that will go down along the front and over all of this hair. So that's how you make your rooted front. Usually you would sew the hair going back like that. However, for volume, if you sew it this way, the root is going this way and the hair will flip over itself. As you can see here, I'm sewing down with my normal chain stitch, that first piece of wefting across the front. As you can see, I'm using white thread. I normally wouldn't use a white thread, but I wanted you guys to see it, so it's easier for you to see the chain stitch if I use white versus brown. So once you get to the edges, you want to make sure that you tack it down to the, to the base of the wig very, very securely, like that. Next, next, section off your next piece of hair, working back from the front of the wig. Add your next piece of wefting going the opposite direction. Secure down the edge again. Notice how I didn't cut off either side of the wefting. Next, fold down your next section of wefting. Make a tight right angle corner with the first piece of wefting you used and fold it straight over top and sew it down. Again, tack down the corner very tightly. Fold the underneath piece of wefting over it, section off your next piece of wefting, and then sew that wefting across. You will continue doing this until you get to the back portion of the wig where the wefting starts running horizontal. It started to get dark as you can see, so I flipped this around and put my computer on my bed. So as you can see, the whole top of the wig has been sewn in. I used a lot of hair, almost the entire two packs that I had going up here. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to clip this off just stick a really big clip in it and you want to clip up like halfway up this back you can also if you're sewing it you can also do it in panels so you can do from here up and then you can do from here up and you can do from here up or you can go straight down or you can go straight up um, I'm gonna do the panels just because that way I'm still sewing up and I'm not gonna risk running out of hair. So here I just sped up again. I just clip the sides up and I start sewing my hair down. Now on the front sides, I don't keep my wefting and fold it over. I cut the wefting off at the front edge. So I just finished sewing that middle panel in. She kind of looks like Annie or Bernadette Peters, like busted little sister with a bob. I don't know. She's starting to look a little cool, but She'll look awesome when I'm done. I'm with my top two sections, and I have this whole back panel to fill in. But as you can see, I have this much of the 30 and this much of the 27. That's not enough hair to fill in up here. As you can see, these are very thick wefts. It depends on what brand you have. Sometimes your synthetic hair will be a single weft, but most of them, especially the more expensive ones, are double. It. Take the wefting. And you can just see where they're threaded together. It was obviously just two separate thin wefts that were then sewn together on a machine. And see how I'm just splitting it like that. So that is going to take me forever to cut all these off because if you try to rip it, you'll rip the you'll rip the wefting apart. 
Okay, so as you can see here, I started on the bottom again and I started sewing the hair in at the bottom every two wefts. Then once I got about eight wefts up, I started to go every wefting again, every single one. And I was folding them over on the edge of the sides of the wig and doing the, the right angle trick I showed you guys earlier. Just saves time and energy because then you don't have to cut them as much. And continue going up the back of the wig until you reach where your sewing was done on the top. As you guys can see, I am done with the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray some oil sheen on it just to get it nice and shiny again because I did rip those um, weftings apart so they got, you know, they get a little fried on the bottom. And then I'm going to brush it actually because I don't want the final look to be too spirally. And if you brush it, it kind of just pops into curls versus a uh, spiral ringlet. So. Okay, so I'm just keep going up the wig, section by section, spraying it down with the oil sheen. Um, you don't have to spray with the oil sheen. I like to spray them down with oil sheen. It kind of lubricates it as you brush it. And I find you don't get as many snarls and snags. Here you can see how much hair there actually is on the top of that thing, a lot. Um, and I just keep brushing her through and then brush her till she's totally brushed out, and then I take her upside down and I shake her a little bit. That's how you add hair to a short wig to make it long and very, very full. And as you can see, I can get a lot of volume just with my hands. You know, just with my hands, I can get a lot of volume and shape into this hair. And there's no teasing at all, at all. You guys, how I put a root, how I start for a rooted front. thing you guys wanna do when um, you're adding hair to a wig and you want to turn it into a rooted front, you take your front, you wait until the end because you can omit this step. I find that if I omit this step, my rooted fronts don't look as nice as if I'd done it, but you can get away without doing it. What you want to do is you want to section off the front, top, front and top sides of the wig. Now, see here, there's little tiny bang pieces or little short pieces of the wig. You want to find those and you want to pull them out. Your edge, like I showed you guys in my um, How to Sew a Hair into a Wig tutorial. Um, just fold it over, just maybe like a quarter inch, half an inch or so around. And then you want to sew it across the front. Like you want to sew it aiming forward much like you did that first time around. Okay, so here you see I'm adding in my darker piece. That's only because I didn't have enough to go ear to ear across. I only had enough to go about temple to temple because I started with that color first in the top. So you just keep sewing it all the way across and you wanna make sure that you secure your ends very, very securely on either side so that when you tease them later, they won't pop up. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys how I personally do a rooted front on a wig. Um, they're called a wig line or French fry hair or whatever. I call it a rooted front or a drag queen front. So what you wanna do is you need hairspray, you need a blow dryer and with adjustable settings and you need a brush or a teasing comb of some sort. So I'm gonna take a center section here And you really, really, really want to pack that down in there. And then I also will show you another little trick in a second. So then you want to take the short little bang pieces and you want to tease those up and kind of into that as well. Even though the bang pieces are what's going to be the shorter part of your little front here, you'll see in a second. So then what you want to do, take your big section and you want to pull and to tease and you want to pull down. Like that. Pull down. Down. And you want to pack the hair down. Oh, let me drop some. Again. Pull and out. And pull and out. Okay. Now. 
And all I like to do is I like to tighten up my T's by kind of pulling on it like that. Basically, that split the T's down the middle. So if you pull the opposite way, the T's actually tightens up, much like that. Then what I do is I take my hairspray. Um, I prefer an aerosol hairspray for this because I find that a wet hairspray stays wet too long and it gets gray looking and put it on medium heat and at first put it on medium go, medium power and then put it on high power. You wanna let the blow dryer heat up and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna aim it back here and aim down on the hair and then as you do that, you'll pick at it with your comb. So you only want to use the medium heat because you kind of, what you want to do is you want to slightly melt the fiber of the wig just a bit so that it kind of melts into that shape. And you can kind of get it right up on there. Unless you have it on high, it won't really do any, it won't do any harm. If you have it on high, you will melt the wig. I learned that the hard way. Okay, so that's how you do one little section. So I'll do the rest and I'll actually speed this up so you guys can see it. So I just keep going from the center out towards the edges of the hairline, just continuing to tease and separate and spraying and blow drying. And I take it in two or three inch chunks. I don't try to do too much at once. I usually do it in about five or six sections to finish the hairline. I just don't want to take too much on because then you risk it not turning out well. Also, only ever use the blow dryer on medium, like I said, until you get to the final step. And then once I'm done with it and it's, I like where it is and how it's sitting and how full it is, then I'll go through and I'll put it on hot with medium power and I'll blow dry it very, very quickly and it's, if you do it for too long or on the high power, it will crisp and melt. So do it high power, medium power, high heat at the end, end, end of it. Half her front all nice and rooted. And I went through with the alcohol and re-wet the hairspray and patted it down to get rid of the bubbles. I now will add another layer of hairspray because that's dry now. So we'll add another layer. I don't really have to coat the crap out of it with this layer because the wetter it gets, the more likely it is to bubble. But you mainly want to focus the hairspray now on these short ends here and pat it down like it's like you'll pat and you'll weave because of itchy. Same thing. I'm going to pat that down. And this is what it'll look like. This is what happens when I start to make a video later in the afternoon than I should. And it's a long one, so I'm gonna let her dry overnight and I'm gonna come back in the morning when it's light out and show you what this all looks like in the light and then I'll show you how to turn it back and how to tease it.